the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So three factors we're examining tonight that have been responsible for the current state of the church and by extension the nation as seen prophetically in the vision of Ezekiel. Number one, the absence of genuine encounter with the Lord. Number two, very quickly. Ready for number two? Very low level of discipleship. Oh, this is a concept you do not hear again in the body of Christ. Younger believers don't even know what this is. What is discipleship? Discipleship is the methodical approach. A scriptural and methodical approach to growth and maturity as far as spiritual things are concerned. The name, the doctrinal name given to the pathway that leads an individual who comes into Christ to now grow and have stature and maturity is discipleship. Discipleship is not a religious thing. People have made religion out of it, I understand. But intrinsically, discipleship is the methodical approach. Please look up. Did you know that the growth and the maturity of the saints was not supposed to be guesswork? Um, do we have any medical doctor here? Please stand, sir. Do we have any other medical doctor here? Any at all? Thank you. Did you by any means go to the same college of medicine with that lady? You're not sure. Now, how come both of you or all of you can accurately do the same thing? Even though you've never met yourselves because of the formula that was used to train you. You didn't have to know yourselves. That means the manual is greater than the lecturers that taught you. So although you were from one region and you were from one region, but both of you are called doctors and you can actually meet for the first time in a surgery room and not doubt yourselves because of the dexterity of the manual that was used to train you. Now, please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. How come when I call a man Christian A, stand up. Christian B, stand up. Christian C, stand up. And all three come to sit down. You cannot even understand what they are discussing. So what is wrong? There must be, we have to probe into the manual that has been used for that training. Or we have to probe into the sincerity of the lecturer. Please sit down. Please pay attention. There is, listen, there is a cause content that is given for the maturity of the believers. And it is not an invention of any preacher. The cause content that has already been predefined to make any believer become mature. The name of that cause content is doctrine. Doctrine is the cause content allocated for the building and the maturity of the saints. Doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means a, a, a predefined body of knowledge that helps the student become something exact. Doctrina, a body of knowledge. Now, respectfully speaking, what happens... Now, remember, we agreed that all our teaching is not to point fingers. If you are pointing fingers at anybody, you are not part of us in this conference now. You have to understand. There is no tell them. We are all a family of faith. Very matured, very intelligent people who are as one body helping to solve what is wrong with that body. Please sit down. Are you learning? See, let me teach you something. 
the zenith of transformation is not enlightenment it is love we know you are most transformed not through the communication of knowledge alone if your knowledge grows as your love depletes it is not the holy spirit who is responsible for that building because if god builds you the more you know the more your love life rises to match your revelation so that you dispense the truths that you know from a standpoint of love the love factor is what validates that god taught you be learning all these things this is a conference discipleship second timothy chapter 3 my goodness wherever we stop tonight we'll share the grace and come tomorrow this is a school of the spirit second timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 very quickly if we can second timothy and that from a child everybody say child so you are supposed to begin to learn the ways of god from a child if you become an adult before you start time is already against you you have to create extra lessons to quickly because what you need to learn you need to learn it on time and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture are we together which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in jesus christ to 17 now all scripture he's still talking to that child is given by god by inspiration of god and is profitable for please talk to me for first doctrine before reproof there cannot be reproof and correction when there is no basis the basis is doctrine then from the lens of doctrine we can now adjust the excesses the excesses correcting the, this is why let me balance this oh dear we have other sessions let me not please pray for me that we just do you know maybe this may be a word from god to just help someone tonight not everybody has the grace to correct the body of christ just because you see things going wrong does not mean you just stand up and start talking correcting the body of christ is an office listen this is south africa do you just go as a citizen and arrest anybody for doing wrong there is an authorized system is that true licensed and when they come the first thing they show you is their license do you know what your license is there is a requisite level of love you must have for the body if not you would never be given the grace to correct that body you cannot correct the body from a standpoint of antagonism from a standpoint of bitterness your motive is already corrupted yourself hmm. everybody say discipleship please shout it say discipleship do you know why the educational systems in most of our top universities globally work harvard yale oxford do you know why because they insist on maintaining standards of what is being taught they have all kinds of quality control systems that they will not bend to so you can trust the products that come out from there the primary reason why the educational systems respectfully speaking in africa continue to plunge is because there is no insistence on there is no standardization so all kinds of compromises can come that is how it is spiritually can i be honest with you when you understand doctrine you see the thing about spiritual growth and knowledge is that believers do, do not just learn anything spiritual to grow there is a sequence when a believer comes to christ and gets born again the next thing to teach that believer doctrinally speaking is not success if you teach that person success from that standpoint you have only given the flesh what to manifest that person will most likely not last that person needs to understand the rudiments 
of godliness repentance from dead works the power of character now when you teach that person by the time you come into the series on success there is already a background he knows you have tamed the flesh so the teaching on success now comes to a matured believer who understands the purpose of influence the purpose of wealth we cannot randomly teach anything just because we find it from scripture look at me please again let me use an example with our educational system assume with me for instance that you find a student in the university in college today you run to the faculty of engineering for lecture tomorrow you run to the faculty of medicine or the college of medicine next tomorrow you go to art are you in the university yes will you graduate because your knowledge is not methodical you are in the system but you are not growing when they award you a certificate or a degree is because you have stayed in keeping with the, the sequence of the growth across a field of study they don't give you degree for everything they give you degree for the field that you chose to stay on course for listen to me apostle felix if an average believer is called right now at random let's call an average believer who has been in church for say two years three years five years and you stand here and we interview you based on the foundational doctrines of scripture you will be surprised and even weep that the average believer does not even have an under what do you know about prayer what do you know about salvation can i get someone saved and hand him over to you and say i will return back in two years i should meet a general i should meet a champion do you know how to what is the next course Are we blessed that's why after this conference you should come to meet your man of god and hug him and say thank you sir thank you for giving an opportunity for the body of christ not only in south africa but across can i be honest with you every national problem was first a regional problem every regional problem was first a community problem every community problem was first a family problem every family problem was first a problem that was not solved by the church which is the light nothing starts at a national level everything only manifests at a national level it is very easy to change a territory you change a nation by changing regions by changing communities by changing families by working on the church africa is about the most religious continent across the globe am i right on that and can i be honest with you the average church in africa attends has at least contacts with a spiritual leader once or twice every week If what we are producing is not bringing glory to the name of the Lord there must be an unashamed examination let's examine the course content let's examine the state of the lecturer first there are other issues but they are not as powerful as we make them Satan knows this and he will do anything to keep us arguing and fighting one another addressing the issues that are the obvious but not the right ones doctrine i've had the honor of praying for many institutions and many businesses and many companies and for some of them i see the dexterity around their administrative system when i came in here the excellence of your protocol i saw all of the people uh, uh, the wonderful your 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 whole reception team here do you know why these people are like that they are trained they didn't guess their way on what to do now watch this everybody please watch this please look up if you can find it who asked him to come who asked him to come and pick it why didn't you come do you not love your pastor why didn't you come it's not your jurisdiction you were trained are you seeing this now anytime there is no training there will be disorder 
I just threw this arbitrarily and he knows I put pressure on his office and his training now his ability to do this has proven that this man is a good shepherd Please sit down. I was glad. Thank you. When they said unto me, you see why it's really, this should be the basis of your confidence when you invite people to church. You invite them with this passion, knowing that just one service. You see that now? And you tell them, please come to the house of God. You will find wisdom there. Listen, the church should not be or look like a nuisance to civilization. No. The contents that we give are profitable all wise. It's not just the spiritual lives of the people. We communicate ideas that transform people and eventually help people to build the nation. The church is not just some spiritual nuisance. No, we are a blessing to everybody. We are the principal shapers of the spiritual convictions of any territory. So there is a serious discipleship problem. We must examine the things that we teach. Hebrews chapter 6 talks to us about the doctrinal pillars of the Christian faith. Doctrinal pillars. Six of them it lists. And then it says let us go on into perfection. Not laying again the foundation of doctrine of baptisms laying on of hands resurrection eternal judgment etc hallelujah we must be methodically built number three let me hurry up for time what is the third factor that is responsible for the decadence of the church like prophetically seen in the vision of ezekiel are you ready for this number three is that there are few models or references few models in certain territories there are almost no models few models or references that can inspire people and show people pragmatically how to be a christian can i tell you this every territory thrives to the degree to which they find models that reflect their aspirations business people excel because there are individuals who are seen as models when a territory does not have models men and women who have paid the price to become worthy references that you can draw from their lives the inspiration to continue you can literally use their lives as a marking script to correct yourself as you move. The Bible says, woe to a city whose king is a child. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The absence of worthy references and models that ye be not slothful but followers of them followers of them so you follow him but you can also follow them when there is him and the them are not there the people become confused there must be worthy references so that when you are talking about integrity the holy spirit can use the image of an individual to help you and say it is possible keep moving don't bend that a man can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and still move forward when your life is when you are prayerless the holy ghost can use the face of someone question how many models are in africa that can be used i'm not talking about blamelessness i'm talking about the sincerity of press by the grace of god to become a reference longevity ministry does not make you a model it is the dexterity of your track record are we together transformation is difficult when there are no references global leaders will tell you this you can't change into nothing there has to be a reference for a long time, climbing Mount Everest was possible. 
but because there was no one who had done it there was no model to create inspiration many people believed and someone did it and someone did it now you go and check the records how many people have climbed many many business people usually when you find a territory that has one businessman that rises becomes a global voice now he can become a reference they can follow his footsteps can i tell you this until we find solid christians in south africa in africa christians indeed there will be a very major problem and if you have only one or two or three people that reference is too small you need many people there is a reason why jesus came and gathered 12 people gathered 72 gathered 120 he said i am making you witnesses who is a witness a witness is a validator of a claim you do not need a witness until there is a contention over that claim it's amazing that in ezekiel 37 as i attempt to round up for tonight when god said can these bones live the prophet said only thou knowest and he said prophet if i speak alone even though the bones are hearing me they will not come i need you repeat what i have said i am god but i designed the system that as far as it has to do with the earth there must be a man who will echo what i'm saying and he said unto me the bible did not say and he said he said unto someone this is what i desire but i need you to make it happen prophesy so this is one of the strategies for the restoration of decadence the power of words and the power of information the bible tells us that in this kingdom men live through food and words food and words prophesy to these bones and say unto them oh ye dry bones don't lie about it if they are dry tell them they are dry you will come back to life but first admit you are dry bones and then he says oh ye dry bones i have diagnosed your condition but there is hope hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord god unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter you and you shall live church of the lord jesus christ can i tell you this in the midst of all the things that are happening in the body of christ in the midst of all that we see across africa and society let me bring you a word of comfort do not make a mistake of believing that the church is dead or finished no i can tell you there is a formula there is a strategy that can bring that dead church back to life Amen. south africa hear me the church in this nation and the church across africa is in a very defining moment there are all kinds of shifts happening but find rest jesus is still the builder of the church Amen. so a day can come we will teach our children and our children's children and tell them once upon a time there was a period of decline but hallelujah jesus the lord of the church that one day our children will be able to go to schools and learn the things that are consistent with not just educational standards but faith that one day a day will come church of the lord jesus christ where it won't really matter which church you go to in south africa the same fire the same salvation that one day men of god can see themselves and sit down and say you are a brother indeed because we would have laid aside all of these attributes of the flesh and god would have walked and built us you ask about the next move of god 
he's asking you can these bones Can these bones leave? Please hear me. In the book of Jonah chapter 1, the first two or three verses talk about God giving Jonah an instruction to go to Nineveh. Jonah was so hot and angry, he ran away until he entered into the belly of the fish. Are we together? When he came out in repentance and brokenness, Chapter 3 from verse 1, the word of the Lord came to him again. Please give us Jonah 3 and verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Africa, that great city. God still calls a place that needs repentance a great city. Oh, come on. Someone did not see a prophetic word there. Africa, I know we have gone through a lot. Yes, sir. Politically, economically, spiritually. I know you may have been disappointed in we the men of God here and there. But can I tell you, hear what the Lord still calls Africa. That great continent. That great nation, South Africa. Now you understand why I started the way I started. If he says it. He will do it so if he has called africa the great nation i want to tell you this africa will arise again hmm. but what is the call i'm wrapping up ephesians 5 14 three quick verses i want to do something prophetic tonight now please pay attention i'm going to read these three verses prophetically um i saw colin he's the one i know that my man where is he he's gone yes you will do me something here when i read these three verses please permit my bias but i want you to sing for me the national anthem of south africa <laughs> hallelujah prophetically is a chauffeur to the realm of the spirit that from house of treasures there are bones did he not say as when i prophesied i had a sound can i tell you this the blood of many have gone for the gospel many today have died some of you in ministry do not even know the history of the move of god within your region it didn't come at a platter of gold go and study church history people cried they lost their lives missionaries came some died Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14 South Africa hear the prophetic word ministries business people hear what the Lord is saying wherefore he saith. It is true that you want to see the next move of God. It is true that the bones can leave, but not under any condition. Here is what God is asking you to do. Man of God, businessman, politician, awake thou that sleepest. Awake from that spiritual slumber. Don't give excuses. You will not birth glory that way. Awake awake some of you need to go back to ministry 101 some of you need to go back to christianity 101 and say honestly i've not gotten this thing right i need to make it right second scripture very quickly first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. first samuel very quickly we're out of time first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 3 0 2 and verse 30 first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 wherefore the lord god of israel said i said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever but now the lord said be it far from me listen south africa another word for you from the lord for them that honor me i will honor 
and they that despise me go and read through history any region individual nation continent that ever despises god is a matter of time for you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you one more time you are god say you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone second chronicles chapter 7 popular scripture that has been used by revivalists from verse 13 second chronicles chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14 second chronicles 7 if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if i command the locust to devour the land or if I send pestilence among my people. Next verse. Please read with me in concert. Ready? Read. If. Hold on. He's talking to his people. This instruction is not to strangers. They are his people. If my people, which are called by my name, Number one, we are looking at the protocol for restoration. Number one, they shall humble themselves. Lord, I accept as an individual. I do not know you. I accept the mistakes that I've made. As a parent, as a pastor, as a leader. There is one thing I know about God. You can use brokenness to attract the attention of God. For as long as we continue to act like a people who know what we are doing, even in the midst of our confusion, God will leave us to continue in our pride. He looks for people who are genuinely broken. I don't know about you, but I have learned to come unashamed before God. When I come before him, I don't come as Apostle Joshua Selman. That's nonsense. Your boy is still here. The one you lifted. The one you took from nothing. Oh God, I am still here. Thank God for the applause of kings and nobles. But may I ever remain that child before you. God is speaking to someone here. We are wrapping up. Humble themselves. Please give us that scripture. Number two, and pray. What kind of prayer do you think you will pray in this occasion? Prayer of genuine repentance not some prideful prayer and saying god i'm putting my hand in my pocket as your colleague I, i've been waiting for you no sir brokenness i don't mean to be sarcastic but i'm showing you a formula bones if you will come back you must be willing to listen again it was your lack of listening that depleted you the prodigal son for as long as he was under the influence of his father's voice he experienced so much when he left and there was no more voice he depleted till he began to feed with swine let's finish up and seek my face more than money i believe in prosperity oh. don't confuse what i'm teaching now i believe in prosperity and its ability to help to give you a life of comfort and to advance the purposes of god but I love you more than it. Oh, they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. How could I exalt money more than him? How could I exalt ministry more than him? Where were these things when the devil was almost destroying me? Can I? listen 
God is speaking to us tonight. Some of you, this may be the reason why you have not seen the power and the grace of God. You love him, but how much? Simon, but Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? Please, let's finish up. And turn from your wicked ways. If you pray and don't turn, you are still a sinner. The prodigal son said, how he came to himself. Africa, let's come to ourselves. If we want to fulfill that prophetic word of being that continent that will return Christ back. I'm speaking to world over. The world. But please permit my bias. Passionately communicating this to our dear continent. Africa was now feeding with swine. And Africa said, I, I come to myself. He said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here today feeding with swine. I will arise. I cannot change myself, but I can go to where change will happen. I may not be able to save myself, but I can come to church. I may not have the power to drive those demons, but I can come to a man of God who has been graced. He said, I will arise and I will go back to my father. I'm showing you repentance. Repentance requires action. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And the moment he was leaving his place of decadence, the father too was leaving his house. They met somewhere on the way. Can I tell you this? The greatness you are looking for is also looking for you. But he's not looking for the rebel that is at that place. He's looking for the one on his way back. Businessman, hear me. You have tried everything you know to do. It's a spiritual problem. It's not just a financial problem. You have too many friends who would have brought you out. There is a hand that you are against. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever love you. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways, for step by step. You lead us and we will follow you all of our days. For step by step, you are leading us and we will follow you. One more minute. Shalagata barakatos. Lord, we repent of our pride. We repent of our lusts. We repent of our hypocrisy. We repent from putting our strength in ourselves. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, the Bible says. And lean not on your own understanding. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Lord, we repent from the pulpits to the pew. We repent from our places of parliament, even to the marketplace. We repent from our homes. As a continent, we cry upon you for mercy again. You have asked us a question tonight. Son of man, can Africa live again? Can South Africa live again? Can the nations in Africa live again? And indeed we say only thou knowest. But by the authority of scripture. We turn that question into a prayer. And everyone begin to pray that prayer now. Africa live again. South Africa live again. Nigeria live again. Zimbabwe live again. 
Malawi, live again. Is someone prophesying? We are declaring, live again. Live again. Out of the ashes of our decadence, live again. The church is praying, live again. Putting aside our denominational barriers, we come as a people who love Jesus and we speak all dry bones, live again, live again. In politics, live again. In business, live again. Economically, live again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let our children begin to call upon the name of the Lord again. And Adam knew his wife again and she bore him Seth and men began to call upon the name of the Lord Hallelujah. cry before him cry before him in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Now please listen carefully. Apologize for the stretch. But the last thing I'm going to do here tonight. There are people scattered inside. And probably the other halls that have been put. We cannot end this conference. Without giving you room. To make it genuinely right with Jesus. More than a church goer. More than a bearer. Please stand if you can. Of Christian names I apologize for the stretch but this is the protocol that restores the ark if it is God we desire to see again in our land now here's what I'm going to ask you to do all those who are not within this auditorium when the altar call is made please officials if you can just show them somewhere they can stand so we still respect the principles um, as far as um, gatherings and all of that is concerned but for those who are in this hall hearing me preach you're saying apostle I need Jesus desperately as a matter of life and death Christianity is nothing without him or you are here and you are saying I remember giving my life to Jesus but sincerely my life has gone haywire and right now I do not even know what I stand for I need restoration and revival these two groups of people without having to bump on yourselves please come gently and I want you to come and stand at the aisles here I'm going to count one to five please do that quickly if you are still thinking about it sit down on your seat but if you are here and you mean it sincerely please don't pretend this is Jesus some of you are crying one please come to Jesus please come to Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back i'm going to hold the hands of your man of god and we're going to be praying for you you don't have to kneel for for space listen Jesus said this don't be ashamed of your tears some of you are crying you are before him Jesus <laughs> the one who can save to the uttermost in your salvation is the salvation of your children in your salvation it says for this promise is unto you and your children and your children's children as many as are far off yes. even those that the Lord himself will call That's right. those of you who are in front please lift your right hand high to the heavens and I want you to say this after me let it be from the depth of your heart say after me Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight I have heard your word, I've heard your word. 
I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I receive you as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that I reign and I reign with Christ, with Christ. From, today from today until forever, until forever. I, am a child of God. I am a child of God no going back, no going back. Hallelujah. hallelujah please keep those hands lifted your pastor your apostle the shepherd and your father is going to make a declaration over you and when he makes that declaration if there is a place you go to that's fine otherwise I'm sure that there would be a group of counselors or maybe a card given to you or if there is no provision like that whenever we call for those who have made this altar call please do avail yourself so that there will be a group of people who can follow you up praise the lord amen yes. heavenly father we just want to thank you thank you for each and every one of these souls father the scripture says there is a rejoicing in heaven mm. over the salvation of one soul therefore father we thank you for this great harvest father upon their confession in our lord jesus in the resurrection and father we now declare as a church the scripture says whosoever sins will remit is remitted we declare therefore that their sins are forgiven the grace that brought them out here will preserve them in the kingdom and father we decree that unto the coming of our lord jesus everyone here will make it to heaven we destroy every curse in your life and i speak the blessing of abraham into your spirit in the name of jesus christ we declare you blessed in jesus precious name and everybody say amen now quickly you are just going to follow there is a lady right there please follow them we just need to take your name and or your phone number so we can keep in touch with you to help you maintain this decision what a great harvest of soul we celebrate all of you please can you just follow them quickly just follow them it's just going to be a short while follow them and you'll be back into the service you, they would give you an, uh, an information form fill it out quickly please help them help them please fill it out quickly help them help them some people can go through this way can somebody direct them this way please don't go back to your seats just follow them obey instruction so you can write down your names and your phone number and we'll be able to follow up with you and help you to maintain this decision please church one more time give them a clap offering let's celebrate them Hallelujah. Now, before I take my seat, I understand there is a session. Remember, you can see already the wind of revival is blowing. Amen. Please let me encourage you. Let this conference be a moment of retreat for yes, you. Sir. Enter a covenant with yourself that you're not going to miss any of the sessions left. People have traveled from everywhere. We have a session tomorrow. We'll continue from here. And by the grace of God, tomorrow evening will be a miracle service. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Praise name of the Lord. God. Hallelujah. I have obtained permission from your man of God to allow everybody, please write down everything that has threatened the name of the Lord over your life. Mm. For you and for your loved ones. Yes, I'd like you to bring it here. By the grace of God, fire will fall from heaven upon this place. We are going to be standing, listen to me, we are going to be standing under a corporate anointing 
all the servants of God and we're going to trust God that in the name of Jesus there will be such a supernatural flow of, of solutions over the lives of people Amen. now please I like you to encourage even for those who but for any reason may not be able to make it here they can follow um, on on all the platforms that are available the most important thing is that they connect because God is speaking to individuals to families to communities to this nation this continent and indeed across the globe so please make sure that everyone is part of this the Lord bless you the Lord honor you thank you sir in Jesus name dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline